Today we're going to be speaking about the anatomy of a great affiliate program. Uh, we are going to go through the intricacies of some of the processes as well as the organizational structures that it takes to organize, manage um, an affiliate program. This is going to be interactive, so we might ask you some questions as we go through it, and I'm glad that you can all be with us today. I'd like to introduce the panel, and the first person we have is Dan. Uh, Daniel, he is the owner of mpgomatic.com. Uh, he is also the editor-in-chief of mpgomatic.com, where mileage matters. He entered the, the Internet's independent authority on fuel-efficient vehicles. Uh, as a veteran tech writer with 20 books to his credit, Daniel has a penchant for both the untold tale and the long tale. In 1999, he authored the first book on affiliate marketing from a major publisher, The Complete Guide to Associate and Affiliate Programs on the Net. So let's give a round of applause for Dan. The next person we have is Janet Attar. She's the president of businessknowhow.com. Janet Attar is the founder and president of businessknowhow.com, a small business website that reaches close to 2.5 million individuals a year. An expert on small business and home business, Janet is the author of a number of books, including The Home Office and Small Business Answer Book, and A Business Know How, an operational guide for home based and micro sized businesses with limited budgets. The Home Office and Small Business Answer Book was a Fortune Book Club main selection when it first came out and was in the book clubs for many years. A former content provider to America Online, Microsoft Network, and GE, Janet has been running small and home business sites online for 20 years. Everyone, Janet. We also have Ian Fernando. Uh, he is the owner of ianfernando.com. Uh, Ian Fernando is an up-and-coming blogger and affiliate marketer. He has been seen all over the internet and provides useful insights on online marketing affiliate marketing and blogging. His blog, infernando.com, is more uh, for the up-and-coming online entrepreneurs who would like to better themselves online without all this stuff. Ian Fernando is an aggressive internet marketer. Using the power of the internet, he has become a very strong blogger and affiliate marketer. Seen with other popular bloggers and marketers, Ian is social proof on making money online. Being an out-of-the-box thinker puts Ian where he is today. Everyone, Ian Fernando. Welcome to some of the elite attendees. Um, this is uh, the panel here, and we're going to go ahead and get started. This is the anatomy of a great affiliate program. And what you can see in front of you uh, is kind of a pie chart. I was going to use the anatomical structure of a human being, but I didn't want to freak you guys out. So uh, I went ahead and, and used the new uh, Microsoft Office and decided to create a pie chart showing you the segments of the affiliate program that are obviously the most important. And the first we have is affiliate media. Uh, we also have affiliate recruiting, affiliate communications, and affiliate incentives. And throughout this program, we're going to go ahead and pose questions to the panel members as well as the audience concerning the segmentations of the processes and the organizational structures for uh, running and managing a great affiliate program. And we will go through this in that I'll wait for a couple of you to jot down some extra notes. Okay. So with affiliate recruiting, um, we all understand that there are many opportunities coming to events such as Affiliate Summit, there's over 30, 40, 50 forms of blogs. Uh, many of you have your own blogs that you communicate to your affiliates with. Uh, as, well, as well, there are recruiting tools. Uh, one of the top, actually the only and the best recruiting tool in the industry is Citrix.com. Um, as well, there's other ways of recruiting for affiliates. So the panel, um, we'll go ahead and start on this side. And uh, feel free, audience, to ask questions of the panel members as we go. Uh, how do you recruit for affiliates? How would you recommend recruiting for affiliates? Throw me a curveball right off of that. Um, the best way to recruit for affiliates is to have someone in the affiliate manager's position that understands the landscape and knows where to find the right people. I started to prepare a few, a few things. Uh, Basically, 
You can't expect recruitment to happen by autopilot. Nothing is going to happen in a, in a machine sense. You've got to have someone behind the wheel that takes the information that comes from the methods that bring the, the affiliates in and is able to weed through the folks that are, that are going to, uh, going to, to work out. I went around and spoke to a number of, of folks who, who were doing matches at, at the uh, show just before. I spoke to Wade Time at, at GTO Management. And one of his key points was, don't let the task fall to an intern or to half a body. This is crucial. You can't just set up a program and expect the <coughs> to, to flow in. Someone has to effectively be there to, to find and pull the right people in. And then once they're there, take care of it. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, you need somebody in your organization, or if you don't have someone in your organization, someone, a uh, company that you can outsource the work to, to know the industry, know your products, know the type of affiliate that you want to pull in, because not every affiliate is going to be the right affiliate for your product. You have to consider your brand, your brand identity, what you want out of the program. So you have to know Specific types of affiliates, like she said. 
Um, some of those types of affiliates are up here now. Uh, there are niche or specific marketing types of affiliates, like paid search affiliates, who do direct linking. Uh, we have coupon affiliates, data feed affiliates that use companies like Pop Shops or Data Feed File. There are blogger affiliates that need content network as well as images or perhaps affiliate video. Uh, then you have email affiliates uh, as well, domain affiliates, search engine mob affiliates. So in the industry as it's evolving, we're starting to see a cluster of affiliate types and you need to know what type of affiliate is going to match your terms of agreements if you do not allow any paid search, bidding or direct linking don't want to waste your resources or efforts going after paid search affiliates. <laughs> so excellent points, Jenna. So um, now we're getting into the affiliate media uh, impact, emotion, ooh, uh, extension and reach. Uh, we understand that affiliate media uh, might not pull in a sale, but you might have two million impressions. So the offer statements on those media and other things is very important for extenuating your brand. So panel, what type of media can set one program apart from another? Dan? Define <laughs> media. Um, for this specific instance, let's not go into video or textual composition. How about let's stay with a banner, media, offer statements. Uh, okay, so as a publisher, I know what every space of my site is for. And if you try to have me take a banner and, and run it as a CPA offer, you'll get a couple of days, and if it doesn't convert, it's gone. I won't run ads to brand your business for free. I get the charity, but unless you're a nonprofit, I'm not giving my space to you. So, Understand that the most savvy publishers, not one of them, knows the value of their space, and they know that they can get this much from a CPM offer. They can get this much from a CPC on average, which works out the CPM. And if you go on with a CPA and it doesn't deliver, you're gone. Banners, for the most part, for a publisher, do not work for CPA overall. The best ones work. But it's fine, fine percentage. So you have to test, test, test to find the right ads that works. And you can't always use your, your affiliates as, as guinea pigs. Here, take this banner. I think it works great, and it doesn't deliver. That's why things like C, we can see here, Nick Christian Johnson, you, you see the, the bars, they, they start to tell you how much each of those offers is, is converting in dollars and, and percentage wise. <laughs> The publisher can look at that and get a comparison pretty quick and say, okay, well, other people might have lost on that one. I'm not going to take that one. But that one's got some, some weight, so all of that. Not knowing whether it's going to work on his or her specific site, because everything has to be context. Kind of wrap it up right where we're going. All right, well, one of the things that's really important is professional looking media. Don't let your uncle's son's uh, daughter created because they're taking grant about arts for this in high school. We had some actually CPM offers that were paying us a lot of money and when I saw the grant fix they cringe. In one case we actually sent them back to them and said, you know, that fix that people would run, nobody's gonna click on it. What we look for in the graphics and, and whether it's a affiliate or well CPM we usually don't send that. But uh, on the affiliate um, side, as Dan said the graphic or whatever we're going to put up, it's got to compete against anything else we could run in that space for making this money. So we're looking for graphics that are going to be attractive and professional. Come in a variety of colors, come in a variety of sizes, come in multiple colors and, and, and media but, uh, for the same exact size because what we'll do is we'll load all those creators to our own ad server, uh, so we're using a network that, that lets us, you know, that we can work with the third party server. Uh, and test them ourselves to see which gets the better click through and then uh, you know, on the click through what actually makes us the most money. So if we don't have that ability to test it, first thing doesn't work, you're out of luck, you're gone. But we've seen double, triple the response from the exact same word, the exact same size, just to pull that out of the end. Well, that's a uh, good topic. These can go rapidly up, but uh, basically what Dan and Dan said, um, testing, and uh, you want to have different variables. Uh, coming from uh, the 
this time, won't have an advantage for, uh, let's say, a blog style or something like and then maybe a magazine style or something because uh, text ads are within value of you know, working on one site or the other site. So it'll be kind of uh, testing the color experience. They can hopefully alternate the color um, to the ads for the network to help out well with the banner changes a little bit to tweak it to make sure it matches their website. <coughs> and um, you know, the network population did a lot of testing, a lot of testing on the context side, see what works, how many times it should flash or
Um, just to add to that, uh, since we brought up a good perspective on impediments of ads, banner blindness, and back to the first question where we were talking about uh, ads, you know, uh, rotation of ads helps a lot. Changes uh, making sure they look different on a lot of sites, looking different from time to time basis, so nobody gets the banner blindness. But um, in advancement, I see a lot of video, a lot of interaction with widgets that are being created on just the sidebar. Even uh, something that gives you data news feeds of offers on there uh, is very helpful for uh, readership because they want to interact with uh, Our main thing right now, uh, I guess what we want to know, the more we want to interact with a reach, you know, we want to interact with the audience, we want to show them a lot more stuff. So, banners and uh, other static, I guess you can say, uh, probably more uh, Get lost, but now with video being more interactive with the user, uh, I do a lot of videos, so basically interact with my viewership, talk to them about a the product, and then you know, give them a little link. Uh, the widgets and the data feeds on widgets on your site, and it gives you a lot of information. Get the readership to interact with your site, and you can interact with you more. So, uh, advancements uh, impacting is, I think, a lot more interaction with the webmaster and So to um, <clears throat> tie that up as far as the, the panel is saying, uh, it's important to think about alternative types of media. A banner is not going to cut it anymore. Um, we need to think about custom content for bloggers as well as images. They need to know, is it okay to use a certain image or um, specify a product to a blogger that they can speak about concerning your product. So having a copywriter on your affiliate management team might be a good idea. Um, extenuating the banners, um, like they have said, into alternative forms of media such as video. A uh, COOF is an excellent example. They're here at the summit. Uh, they have a video widget. Uh, video is now trackable. Uh, web video zone and some of those other um, you know, new tools, uh, as well as in skin. And we have pop shops. Um, and you can see the web video zone player. Um, so there are some amazing advancements in affiliate media right now. Um, and you need to know what is available as far as media tools. Uh, throwing out textual links as well as uh, banners uh, is, is, is not going to cut it anymore. You have some pretty advanced affiliates and you're looking at programs. And you want to make sure that you're either testing some of the new advanced materials uh, just so you can get a handle as well as an understanding of what is available. And make sure you're monitoring your competitors. Are you able to get affiliates what they need to be successful with your affiliate program? Um, like you guys have said, you want to consider the types of affiliates. Are you going to send your paid search affiliates a coupon offer? Um, or are you going to send your coupon affiliates the coupon offer? Segmenting those affiliates and then organizing the media that you send to them is important. So, um, we get into affiliate incentives. And when we pull affiliates into an affiliate program, uh, after we have segmented them into types, we recruited them with communications and emails, and we have them in the program and we have different types of media to offer them, everything's going well. Um, but as well, remember that this is a performance-based channel and we want to incentivize them. So there are obviously different ways of incentivizing a human being to action. Um, humans like money, and this is performance-based. I had a client um, ask me one time, would it be okay if, if we gave them a, you know, a, a piece of our product or one of our products for every 12 sales? I think it was every 12.5 sales. <laughs> I'm like, how many cars do you need? How many, how many pieces of this product uh, do you think this, this affiliate is going to want or desire? So really consider the, mon uh, you know, the monetization of the incentivized plan. And we'd like to ask the audience, how many of you have an, an annual incentivization schedule or plan? Raise your hands if you have an incentivized plan. One, two, nice, three. Excellent. Okay, panel, um, can you give us some examples of affiliate incentives? You have seen work for a merchant's program. Are there, are there any examples of great incentivization plans that you've seen? So I'm like the old man in the panel because I was doing arbitrage, purpose arbitrage, I bought the work was called blogging. And uh, back in the early days, you could buy clicks for a penny a pop. Mm -hmm. And there was VC money and, and companies were going public and it was insane. It was really good for you to it because you could go to the racetrack with two bucks every day bet on a shot and win. You can go to the search engines, buy those ads that go to for a penny or two, 
Seneca Merchant was going to give you a great commission, plus a new customer bounty, plus some other unnamed bonus at a later date. And you, you just, you won, no matter what. But things changed as, as the funny money ran out. There are still new customer bounties, but they're so much smaller than they, than they were. And, this, and these smaller merchants don't have the cash to splash like it was in the old days. So what do you, you know, what do, you do to, to rope the affiliate in and keep them in? That's, the big, that's really the big, the big question. You can send trinkets out, but that only goes so far. The, the biggest um, low-cost way to do it is just personal attention. Making sure that the affiliate knows that you're listening to what they're saying. That you're not just sending out your email offers every week automatically by, by pushing a button. That you really care about their model and how your offers work within their model. So the better the affiliate does, the more attention you give them. And it's praise. It works for dogs, it works for kids, it works for affiliates. It's so okay. uh, so we live by getting traffic to come to us on a regular basis. So we're always looking for things that are going to be more of an incentive or as much of an incentive for our audience as it is for us. So for us, uh, special coupons and special discounts that are exclusive to our site members uh, work well. Higher than normal commissions because, you know, going back to the ad spaces and real estate, uh, is it going to pay us to put it in a particular place in the higher the commission something is? The more we're going to promote it in various ways, not just on our own page. Um, and then ongoing commissions, if what we are promoting is something where somebody's going to be subscribing and staying your customer forever, <coughs> excuse me, or we're going to be making repeat sales uh, where we get a you know, commission every time they buy a particular product. Those kinds of things we will promote, if, uh, assuming they match our audience, and they do well, we will promote them forever. We have some relationships we've had for a very long time. Uh, for the merchants that continue to do well. Uh, well from a billion standpoint, I like it where uh, networks really challenge the billions to you know you make this X amount uh, this month will match it. You know, that's a big way to get your billions to you know, most of uh, monthly increases. Uh, like Dan said, you know, all these trinkets you can you know give it to anybody. You know, I get a lot of things in the mail, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna promote the offer. I mean it's gonna look you up, uh, see what kind of offers you run. But if you wanna win by challenging give you more money, uh, make you want to, you know, okay, we'll try to run this offer. Uh, recently um, one of the networks uh, actually personally emailed me and told me you made X amount with this specific offer, I'll match it. And it got me thinking, like, okay, if I just match the board line of, let's say, $100 for one, or $100 for you where know, we're going, it makes the match to which is beautiful. Because all I do is get to the board line. If I got to the board line, uh, I got the basic to match it. Um, another one uh, recently was Ad Nine with a green team contest on And they challenged all their, all their affiliates. And when they challenged all their affiliates, want to see with top down the top five and then they give prizes if they're going to vacations or if they're going to uh, get an effect about a week or something like that. It makes you want to push the fleet more so. Uh, again it's from my point of uh, like standpoint where you, know, you just want to push me more for your office more. The more you push me and give me more cash what you say that I'm more than passive money to talk. Absolutely. What's really interesting, I'm listening to you guys, is um, you know, I work with a lot of super affiliates and most of the networks, and you guys hit it right on the head. This is very interesting and something that you should all take home. If you don't have cash or the opportunity to bonus, if uh, you're an affiliate manager and uh, your superiors are not going to give you an annual allowance to, do, you know, to segment throughout the year as bonuses or bounties or cash rewards, think about some of the things that the panelists have said today. Um, can you, do you have a copywriter on your team? Can you copyright? Can you be able to blogger a uh, custom content um, that is an incentive for them to produce? Can you give an affiliate specialized media, perhaps a landing page, um, as well as an 
or custom offer or uh, maybe a commission bump. Um, so there are other ways of incentivizing affiliates. Um, and it sounds like some of those other ways might be preferable um, at times if they want you to be able to give them the tools and the resources to help them succeed. So excellent. Um, and just real quickly, Thomas, uh, do you think that incentives should be written into an annual affiliate program sales goal schedule? And what I mean by that is when you are writing and thinking about your KPIs, uh, your key performance indicators for your channel, um, should you write in 1% um, of that affiliate sales profit, should that be turned back into incentivized money to help grow your program? What do you guys think about that? Okay. I'm going first and ask this because I've never run an affiliate program, so I, you know, working from that side, I don't know, it sounds like it's probably good at the end. More than 1%. Okay. Cool. I just want to
to the forming channel. So they're training their super affiliates to that channel and telling them what they know. So that's excellent. Is there one more um, on this side to the meeting? Yes, sir. Sure. I'm uh, sort of a rookie to the affiliate world, but I've been in the fantasy sports business for 15 years. So we're here uh, recruiting to have more people play fantasy football. 30 million people play fantasy football in the U.S. Academy. I want to have a, uh, an incentive program. So this year we have a $10,000 bonus if you recruit the winner of our fantasy football. Wow, that's very neat. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that with us. Instead of based on a, a, an incentive. That's great. Um, so now we get to the communication part. Um, HTML email, <coughs> intranet work, and extranet work. Um, HTML emails can be sent out to affiliates, um, as well as regular text-based emails. Um, there are so many different ways of communicating with affiliates, and we've written up here some of those ways. Uh, RSS feeds, having a promotional calendar or an inventory volume calendar if you have a certain spot inventory of high AOV or average order value that the affiliates might be interested in running with. Uh, affiliate tutorials, education. Uh, there's many ways to communicate with an affiliate. Um, and uh, panel. Uh, how do we organize all of this affiliate communication, looking at it from a business process? How should we organize this, this affiliate communication? I keep feeling like the wrong guy to be here. Um, I can't tell you how to organize it. But I can just say that it needs to be personal to your best affiliates. With affiliate marketing or team, Taking care of your affiliates is more than a 9 and 10 split. You know, there's always a 10% of your X does 90% of your business. With affiliate marketing, it's, it's more extreme than that. So, with those top performers, make sure that that communication is, is on a personal level and it's not just an HTML email. Definitely, you want to send out, you know, if you've got new offers coming out all the time, so you want those offers to come out in HTML. With the code right in the email, they can cut and paste it. Anything you can do to make it easier for the affiliate to, to get those offers on their site quickly, go for it. Well, like everything else, you need a plan. And, and I, I think you have to look at who your affiliates are going to be. Are you going to be looking to bring in people who are just starting themselves as affiliates or are only the top performance and that's going to have a lot to do with the product and the budget? But if you're working at bringing in some new affiliates, you probably wouldn't have heard to have an autoresponder so when they first sign up, they can get some basic information back in the program and where to go to get additional information. Uh, newsletters, definitely, and if you're set, and sending out code, the special office with the code right in the email, that's really a help. But be sure that you send them out far enough in advance so that the, uh, your affiliates can have time to get them up on the site while they're still working. There's nothing worse than to put up an offer and you know you start getting email from your audience saying, hey, you can't have that before. Uh, because they're not going to put that in anything else and they're not going to put anything else into the information. That personal contact, that, that, that's key. I agree, personal contact. But uh, I want to ask, uh, how many billions are in this world? And uh, that's raising hand. Okay, so uh, I guess you like to get personal communication from the affiliate managers. It's what I like. You know. uh, I like, I mean, newsletters help sometimes, but I mean, the quick interaction, intimate interaction with uh, affiliate or and with uh, affiliate manager helps a lot. Um, communication is just a must. You know. If I can't contact my direct AM, I ask somebody in the network or email them on the network say, hey guys, Somebody help me with you know. Uh, like for example, uh, one of my AMs with another network, you know, I have like literally three AMs where if I can't contact one person, I can contact two other people just in case I need any safety product. Because right? sometimes you can't debate, uh, you want to promote something, you want to know the answer by the way. Another thing that I've seen is uh, private forums that where all the AMs communicate with each other and they communicate with all the affiliates. Uh, that's very helpful because everybody's throwing in their ideas, all the AM throwing their ideas, all the affiliates throwing their ideas. So it's uh, a nice little community, uh, community that's being based on the split market. And it's on the um, organizing the communication. Uh, uh, another one is uh, Neverblue. Neverblue has a very interactive dashboard. Uh, but again, they don't really interact with them that much, but their whole uh, interface interacts with their whole network. 
interact with their uh, with the with the affiliate directly and give them the stats. Uh, so intimate interaction is very important. Uh, again, from the affiliate standpoint, you know, and I guess for you guys. So, uh, go ahead. Excellent information. Um, how many of you know who Sean Collins is? Raise your hand. Okay, that's communication. When you're an affiliate manager, you want affiliates to see not only your face, but you want them to have your phone number. Many people outside our industry are like, oh, this is such an egocentric industry. You know, why is your face everywhere? Why, are, why do you have a blog? You know, who are you? What are you doing? And why are you doing video? What are you doing? We're, we're trying to get their attention. <laughs> we're trying to introduce ourselves. We're trying to meet them. We're trying to pull them into our programs. We're um, trying to build a relationship where there's a level of trust, where the super affiliate, like you said, you like to have a contact number where he can call an AM and say, hey, I've got revenue and ad space value, this just came in, I'm going to get this going today, I'm going to 350 by 350 banner, and the manager is able to, you know, get back uh, with the things that you need. So it's important that it's not a to whom it may concern email, but it's, you know, a personalized email with a picture of the AM and, and um, that's really nice information. It's always good to hear that from an affiliate as well. Just to add to that, um, it's, it's funny because I like a lot. Um, a lot of AM we would tell me, hey, I just start with a lot because I want to get more interactive yeah. with my uh, affiliates. And that's very cool because, you know, um, the affiliates can actually leave a comment with a lot before, and the affiliate manager can actually just talk about it. It's because it's all great, what they're doing, how it's now it works. That's nice. And, you know, affiliate managers are there to educate and, and teach and well as be, become friends. You know, I have, I've got a super affiliate I've worked with for six years. He's my friend. You know, these are our friends. This is a family. Um, you know, most of us, it's a small community. And uh, we play nice and we get to know each other. So the most effective communication strategy to increase the profitability of an affiliate program um, is obviously the delegation of resources, Pareto principle, economy of scale, maybe 20 rule, we understand maybe 10 or 20 percent base are the ones that are supporting the profitability of the program. So how do we organize, and just think about this in, the, in a business perspective, uh, Janet has made some excellent points on this, the organizational process with delegation of resources, do you want your whole team educating the 80 percent that aren't producing, or should we start looking at maybe putting, you know, a little bit of your team on encouraging the 20 percent that aren't producing, and just logically as a, as a, as a you know, business um, plan, your what type of resource allocation um, you know, would be the most effective for, for increasing the profitability of an affiliate program? So I'm trying to get ready for this. I drove up here from New Jersey and borrowed a car because what I do is I test cars. I get a new car every week and uh, luck of the draw, I got one and I got it 40 miles per gallon. As I'm sitting in traffic in the Bronx, I vow all this and never drive through. Bronx, but I punched into the Tom Tom, and Tom Tom said, Yeah, go, to, go that way, 95, it's faster. I know better, I've done this 20 times. He always gets stuck. Well, I've been five years before I even hit the head again. There I was stuck. And I'm thinking, what am I going to, what am I going to tell these folks about how to allocate their resources? It's really tough for, for an affiliate to tell you, you need to spend this much on this and I was trying to come up with, with the right thing. And I picked up the How many, you all got this in your bag? How many of you have opened it? I get to get it. It's very nice. Okay, so open the page. I get this someplace eventually. I have to go to the Bronx first. Open to page 24. There's a really good one page article The 10 Affiliate Manager Commandments. And it's written by Kim Rogers at Four Chess. And on, on this one specifically, how much do you take care of the folks that aren't performing compared to the folks that are? Rule number nine is, thou shall not remove affiliates for low or no performance. These affiliates have shown interest. Now it's your job to go get the ball rolling. Excellent. That is excellent. Yeah, I think I was going like this. I got it. Give them advance notice 
pieces of um, things that are coming up so that they can get ready to develop um, publish results and have editorial calendars and, and you should have promotional calendars. And uh, give us the time so that we can look at what you're doing and figure out how to work and why not. Cool. Uh, well, what kind of boy they uh, very interesting.
see which networks are the best. Uh, yeah, I agree that aspect too. Uh, also from an advertiser standpoint, uh, you want to see what kind of the networks um, traffic are being generated, kind of leads being generated. You just don't want trash leads, you know, or someone just spamming a offer just because it's a quick commission. Uh, from the police standpoint, uh, shooting network is important to me. Tracking is very important, you know, uh, type of offers, amount of offers, the payouts, uh, how regularly you can send by the uh, offers, uh, all that aspect. Uh, from the advertiser's point of view, um, like you know, so they do in the submit case, they want us to or every now and then to get this kind of thing. So I target the lead, target the generated and your quality, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna join a B2B and just send them back to traffic. I'm gonna you know, you're gonna give them you know bad traffic. But they're more concentrated on the business aspect. Uh, so it only depends on the types of leads, the leads that can generate the type of traffic, demographics of the traffic, you know, etc. Those are excellent. Um, you know what's amazing, Janet, is um, what Janet said. Um, how many of you have called a merchant that is in the network and asked the merchant before you entered the network, um, you know, what they think about the network? How many of you did some, some research and investigation of the network? Good, a couple of you have. Um, you know, some of us in this business get so excited and quick to move that we don't think about, you know, some of the simple and most basic business practices, calling other people that are using the service. How is it doing for you? You don't want to get locked in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't want to get locked into um, any contract with any business unless you know exactly what you're getting into. And then what Ian said is very important as well. What type of traffic and how does the tracking support the strategies you have for your program? So, for instance, if you allow paid search, um, but you know that there are super affiliates that need sub ID tracking. Maybe you go to a Zoogle, an open network system, which is a completely different type of network than, say, one of the other retail ones. One other point, too, if you don't have the resources and the time to do all that research and stuff, because it's going to take time. I mean, you've got to put some effort into it. Then maybe you should be looking at outsourcing your affiliate management and let somebody who knows the, the territory handle it for you, because in the long run, if you can budget for that person their skills and that, you know, their, their knowledge in the industry, you're going to be way ahead because then you'll wind up with a kind of really the kind of really focus on the Yeah, and we have some really good examples of some of the networks. And what's really exciting about the industry right now, I personally have counted over 250 networks. Wow, that's a lot. A lot of these run off um, third-party systems like Direct Track or Link Trust. Some of them are internally driven, um, which is rare to find. We do have some of the big players like Commission Junction, Link Share, and of course everybody loves and knows Share So, um, Affiliopolis, Azugal Ads is, is, I love this network, it's an open network system, they use somebody tracking, um, a little partial to paid search affiliates because, you know, it's so fast um, as far as the return on advertising spend working with them. But what's interesting too is Market Health. Um, Market Health is a network that came out and it's niche specific. So many times, if you have a, a really specific product, like if it's organic or eco-friendly or you know food-based item, look for a network that attracts publishers and affiliates that know your market. Um, and luckily, in our industry now, we're, we're lucky to get to see some of these smaller little niche networks come out, and um, and they're really great. So building an affiliate management team, um, when you build when you build any kind of team, not just affiliate management, what are some of the dynamics and things that you need? when you pull a team together to work efficiently. So here's where I take on a shin for not having a copy PowerPoint. And not, not, not for you. Um, going back to, to point the other the team, and I apologize if there are interns are here, but you know, that took, the, took the boss out of it. It's really tough to put someone in right on the bat expecting to be up to speed. So if you're here and you're new, you're in the right place to get to as, as quickly as, as possible. So if you can bring a trained person in from the start, that's great. If not, get them trained or if you're that person, get trained as quickly as, as you can. Definitely, the training and the industry knowledge. It's going to sit with somebody who, uh, just because they've been in marketing, that they're not to know anything about that marketing. Because it's a little bit different in some ways. You need to know the industry, they need to know the player, they need to know the territory, what they 
right? So they're being educated, there's, there's, there's a growth spectrum. Uh, they're being educated that they start performing, they're pulling other places, they're being educated, they start performing, they're pulling other. So we have a compounded event occurring, and this needs to be planned and organized. But that's why affiliate marketing takes time. You should be dedicating, what, two, three, four years to an affiliate marketing channel as an extension of all the other online marketing channels we have. Not, let's try this for three months and then leave. <laughs> that's not going to work. Um, well, any business decision made like that is not going to work. So the minimum number of months or years, um, you know, uh, any kind of business decision, if you're going to go into business, um, should you give yourself a time limit with this channel as far as how long? Um, you know, I guess I would guess a lot of that depends on whether you have shareholders to, to report to and all those other <laughs> things. You know, it's just you running your your own business and it's a small shop, maybe you're a small proprietor, or a sole proprietor, you can call the shots. And you can be more flexible with your corporate structure. There's going to be a lot more pressure to produce, produce results on a quarterly. What is that? I honestly want to say you have to look at the grid. I don't know what the year, because the first six months, it's going to take figuring out what you're really doing if you haven't done it before, or maybe more. So I think you have to look at it at least for a year and then evaluate where you're going, what your progress has been, and then see you know, where you're going. Yeah, I agree as well. Um, you could, you know, that's your kind of uh, leads you're generating, uh, time that you're getting. Um, if you're going to do a short story, you know, you don't know, you don't have your research, you don't have all your uh, data that you need to look at, what kind of traffic is being generated, what kind of uh, leads are being generated, what kind of information being collected. Um, so a lot of stuff that uh, being collected, data is important. Uh, I probably agree with one year, year or year, so it's more of uh, collecting data and researching Excellent. And what's interesting is when we look at older programs that have been around at least 250,000 affiliates, it's 10 years. That's not overnight, that's not two months, that's not a year. That's, that's a decade. And compound, compounding. And then, of course, like you said, uh, data, statistics. Um, in Google, many of us in the internet marketing space do our testing in Google. We do AB, multivariate, Taguchi style testing against the inventory volumes of the search because that landscape provides quick data. But the affiliate channel takes time, um, sometimes a year, um, sometimes even longer to get really good data so you know it's the media working on this channel, the types of affiliates work for the strategies that I have. So some really great um, great information. So of course we had to throw in a little sex and a little booze into our presentation so that this would stick in your mind. Like women and why affiliate programs get better with age. And we had Al McPherson, who is a beautiful 45, at a Bordeaux Chateau Lafitte. Um, so experience matters. Um, you know, uh, don't be so hard on yourselves. Um, uh, you know, there are other performance indicators you should look at before profitability. Did you have three million impressions? Those are valuable. Don't throw those affiliates out because you want your EPC to grow. Um, think about some of the other metrics that you can use um, to help substantiate the growth and extenuation of your brand as well as your media and the affiliate channel. And um, we are ready to take some questions for the panel members here. So if you go ahead and stand up. Um, I'm hoping we have a microphone to go around. Yes? So I'm new to the uh, affiliate world. We've been running our own affiliate campaign for a couple of years haphazardly, and I just basically took over it. We have some decent amount of people homegrown in, you know, from our own program. What is the first thing you would do to grow that outside of that? Because obviously there's a lot to do. So what would you say the most important thing to do outside of our own homegrown program is join a network or? Who wants to take this? Um, I think, you know, it's all about scaling uh, from the police side, on my side anyway. Um, you want to grow out of it, you want to expand a lot more. Um, I'm doing a network that never can definitely help a lot more, um, get you more uh, exposure to them, more clients, to more play, more tools. Um, just get yourself more out there before the, the network gives you a better chance uh, of promotion and that traffic. So I'm doing more, joining the network and trying to expand more, but that's really my task. Just, just scale it out. The other thing that I would do
very small percent that actually produce compared to the number of affiliates who sign up. So there are a number of ways that you can go out and find the right sites. You can use an automated tool. I'm not going to name any because I can't name any names. But you can do what you do for everything. That's just go to the search engine. Go for your keywords. Start looking at your keywords. See who's ranking on your keywords. See what kind of offers they're running. And then, in the most general way possible, approach them to see if they might be interested in running their offers. One suggestion on that too, because I don't know, I can tell you guys, but we get dozens of requests a week. And I don't even open the ones that say, that look like a hand letter that say, I visited your website at, and that's the subject line. I mean, you know, make it a really it personal just, communication. It's just, that just came out of the, whatever tool they were using. Right, and, exactly. and, and those immediately end, end up in their inbox. They don't get open. They don't get open. So make it, a, make it a personalized letter. And you know what? If, if you can't find their email address, Go to who is. Half the time you get the phone number. And then when you call them, be really, really, really nice. And apologize for calling. I'm really sorry I called, but your site is awesome. And I was wondering if you might be interested. In this is what we do and uh, you might be interested in running. That's why I keep my battery. If you are cool and if you can't find out who sent email to me, send to the sales app. There, if you get something like mine, there's going to be somebody reading that, and they're going to be my gatekeeper. And don't try to get around them. Don't tell them, and, and we've had this happen a lot lately, somebody must be giving this out as advice before. They said, oh, I talked to Janet last week, and she told me to call her back. Well, as soon as my person puts them through to me, I know I haven't talked to them before. Be realistic. Tell them why you're calling. <coughs> and give them enough information that they can give to me so I can decide what I want to you know, at some other time or then, or if I want to, you know, do something or contact with them, you know. I, I would just like to say that is an excellent point. Um, we are developing relationships, and, you know, like, I'm gonna, I hate to use this as an analogy, but in a dating relationship, would you, would you go up to a human being and make some cheesy, lying introduction? You know, exactly. let the obvious common sense logic type of good, healthy relationship develop, and those are excellent uh, points, Janet. Does anybody else have a question? Yes, sir? Uh, yes, there, there to be... Can you stand up, please? Sorry. New to the affiliate world, uh, myself, is, is there any taboos or issues with working with multiple uh, networks, affiliate networks? No. AppSpy just launched, um, I think they're public now. Maybe verify AppSpy is public. I got an email yesterday, affspy.com. Um, an amazing new little system that's out, and it will show you a lot of CPA and CPL offers that are in 10, 15, 20 networks. There's no rules for expanding. <laughs> there's no um, there's no stop sign. So, um, you know, obviously you've got to have the resources to allocate, but what do you guys think about multiple networks? Oh, I just want to answer that. For me, multiple networks is it's a hassle. It's like more of a juggling. Uh, I've signed up. This is my uh, second place summit. From the first place summit, uh, I was attacked. You know, all the things <laughs> came at me. And uh, so juggling all that and, and just joining the system, I was like overwhelmed. So now, when now it just come to me, I actually ask for temporary login. So I can look at their offers, look at their campaigns, look at their, look at their, uh, at their tracking system. If I'm joining them, I'm joining them. Um, so I like to concentrate on maybe top five or even top three that really converts for me well, um, but also keep an open mind on other networks because some other networks will want to work with you and have more exclusive offers. Uh, some networks will have more offers than another network. Uh, and then communication with other networks, like let's say uh, we'll pay out for one offer is five dollars and then you want to go to another network. You want to buy it and you want to get more money. So the Vegas network is paying five dollars. What's the offer is all in this aspect, you know, and you bump it up to six dollars for it, and you incentivize this offer a little bit. You know, it really uh, varies. But uh, I like having a small group of uh, networks for me just because it's more control, it's not more of a, a hassle in terms of network network, and then the network is always calling you up, hey, when you're gonna need more of our stuff.
any of us have limited amount of time, so we are only going to go to maybe a couple of networks. So you want to be where it offers like the type of affiliates you want are going to be. So that it's kind of like you advertise in the newspaper where your competitors advertise because that's how you get found. Well, excellent. You know, again, like she said, uh, Jenna, you said, look, research the network first. Talk to them, call them. Who's in there? Who are your competitors? That's great. Are there any other questions? Yes. I, Could you stand up, please? Uh, the audience, the M talked about affiliate management training, and you uh, mentioned two or three uh, key documents that you would give, or that I should give to my new affiliate manager. Training on tracking. Training on tracking. Training on all offers. Uh, training on uh, the advertising side of my main fees. It's a lot of stuff because me as an affiliate, I ask a lot of questions. I ask all the people to fill out. I'll tell my name and fill this out with a question. You know, send them a credit card offer. Um, it's like one of those steps. And I'll ask the name and is it possible to shrink that step into you know, three pages instead of six pages? Know that the people like better conversions. Uh, if they have to call me back and say, let me get back to you, I'll be like, oh, man, you don't know anything about advertising. Why can't you just come into advertising again? You know, maybe joke around the pages a little bit. Um, tracking is also important. You know, if I'm calling uh, the network about sub ID issues and you're trying to educate me on sub IDs, I mean, that, that doesn't really make sense. You know, uh, also, offers, uh, payouts, if it's going to be exclusive, high high or high. So 
if you want to be part of link chair and other network, yeah. So so think about it. Not a lot of bad mouth in anybody, but it's just the way they are. They're exclusive. If you're smaller, you might not want to be there. You know, Commission Junction is an exclusive yes. yeah. So you could be in the Commission Junction stuff like that. Excellent, you guys. Thank you. Um, I'm getting a cut signal. That's all the time we have. Thank you, Cal.